Hey, taking a victory lap this week is a driver from the Canadian province of Alberta, and she is a 12-time track champion at the quarter-mile Edmonton Worldwide Racing. She's been racing there for the past 14 years, and get this, she's captured the Alberta NASCAR channel. She's captured the Alberta NASCAR title 11 of those 14 years. Her name, her name is Erica Thering. Erica, it's a real pleasure to visit with you today. Yes. Hi. Thanks for having me on. It's really exciting. You know, those are pretty impressive stats. <laughs> what has been your secret? Um, really good teaching. <laughs> Let's just say that. And repetition. Um, you know, my dad raced at that track, obviously. And uh, he's just a really good teacher. And that's what, you know, if you're taught right, you kind of get out of all the you know, bad habits that some mm -hmm. coaches get into. I mean, oh, I still have some, I imagine. But uh, yeah, it helps that way. Being taught right the first time. I mean, right. What was the best teaching nugget from your dad? Um, oh, gosh, I don't know. There were so many. Um, probably to wait, wait, wait for your turn to say and you're not always going to win on the first lap. <laughs> you know, that's 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 a great uh, teaching lesson because it, it's I think it's in a race car driver's DNA that once you strap in that car and they drop the green rag, you just go flat out. And so many race car drivers end up, as you just alluded to, um, wasting the car, be it an accident burning up the tires before it really counts. The last I checked, uh, the checkered flag is the one that gets you the trophy and the purse money. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, wait it out. Right. And that's always yeah. been, I've been good at that part. I'm good at waiting. You know, last season, uh, you had a pretty impressive run. Uh, EWR, uh, due to COVID-19 was limited to only six events, but you never finished out of the top five. You won more than half of the events there. Uh, I, I kind of wonder, because as I read at your website, you, you didn't build a brand new car. You had a car that, well, let's say uh, had reached the elderly stage. <laughs> yeah, last year was kind of a weird year. Like, I mean, we didn't start till August um, just because of everything that was going on. Um, and honestly, we didn't plan. I wasn't even like at by by the time like mid July I was like Ugh, I don't even think we're gonna get it done this year, so um, you know we honestly didn't do anything to the car. Mm. I think maybe we did an oil change, like mm. it was it was it was nothing. Um, this year a little more prepared, but it's not looking as good as it. It's not looking good this year either for us. But um, yeah, it's but you know what? Like that's the thing. Like I think everyone was kind of on the same page too. Like they didn't really expect anything to happen. So I don't know if anybody else really put a whole lot of effort into their cars, right? So I think we just were all on the level playing field that way. So it kind of worked out. You way. just mentioned that the season at EWR in Edmonton isn't really assured yet. The, the Canadian province and Canada as a whole still wrestling with COVID-19 and uh, taking that vaccination path. Uh, what, what is the latest that you've heard from the racetrack? Um, well, they seem to think that by mid, like the Alberta government is telling us that by mid July, everything's going to be completely opened up. Like mm -hmm. we're back to being in a lockdown kind of right now, but um they seem to be like, we're supposed to start middle of May. Um, I'm thinking we'll probably won't start till June sometime. Um, if by what they're telling us, but I don't know. Like I, apparently they had a meeting. They have a meeting this week with the government to kind of, kind of figure things out a little bit. Kind of wondering with that kind of level of strict COVID-19 pandemic rules, what about you and your pit crew in terms of preparing the car? What precautions do you have to take? Um, well, it's kind of hard. I mean, it's like we're supposed to social distance, obviously, but kind of hard to work on a race car. Exactly. That way. 
and I'm not gonna lie, I need someone to, to strap me in real tight. So that's just not happening. So, I mean, I think that for the most part, um, if we keep like our, just our little social bubble, you know, the four people that hang out with every weekend, um, they, they tell us not to, you know, co-mingle into other people's pits, which is, which is fine. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just kind of adapt a little bit. Right. When, with your career and the length of time that you've been competing, it's fairly obvious that you possess an incredible passion for the sport of racing. Has it ever put you in conflict? And what I mean by that is, yeah, I, I love what I'm doing, but there's other things that I want to do. Ah, oh, that's a, that's a great question. Cause I can tell you that has happened a lot. So um, when I first started racing, I, I was 16, 15 or 16, one of the two, I can't remember. Um, but you know what? I missed grad. I, and I didn't even think twice. I was like, man, I don't, don't want to go to grad. Forget that. I got to race. <laughs> but then there was other little things that I, I kind of missed. Like, I think I missed a couple of weddings and stuff, but like, uh, whatever. I mean, now I'm getting a little bit older. So now it's kind of like, I want to tone it down a little bit. Um, I'm not so like aggressive into it. I definitely am so passionate about it, but I, um, I'm more thinking to other things like, you know, running, you know, I don't want to like get so intense into it. If we win, we win. If we don't win, we don't win. It doesn't like wreck my whole week. <laughs> <laughs> you also have in your career had the opportunity to wheel a Pinty's series car within NASCAR. What was the difference uh, driving that versus what you drive at Edmonton each and every week? Um, probably just the level of competition. Um, and the fact that it was road courses too. Um, I've only ever done two road courses. Um, and one of them I hated. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you which one. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to say, like, I honestly, I, the whole race, I was like, you know what? I just want this to be over. This isn't fun. <laughs> it was awful. But, uh, it, yeah, I, it was just that. And like, of course they got a, a ton more power. Um, and there's way more things you got to learn with that kind of stuff. So, um, I would definitely like, if I had another chance, I would love to get another crack at it. Cause I think I have more to offer in that series. I didn't do too good. Mm -hmm. Um, but with more practice, right. But that takes sponsorship. You know, you're very fortunate because you, the passion for the sport and the desire to drive, despite the fact that you're a woman was instilled by your dad, but we've seen female trailblazers, to the point where uh, they populate little racetracks all the way to the top disciplines. Has there been one driver, one female driver that has inspired you? Inspired me. Um, I wouldn't, you know what, honestly, every girl that I have raced with inspires me in a different way. I think. Um, not to pick like a Danica Patrick, of course she's inspiring, you know, um, or like uh, Pippa Man or someone, right? Um, but like every single girl that I do race with, I find inspires me in a different way than kind of like that, right? Like when I yeah. first started, there wasn't a whole lot of girls. Um, now I think there was one point in one of our races that um, it uh, it was all three girls on podium. Wow. Yeah, that was my favorite race, actually. I was, that was really exciting at the end. Any humorous incidents over the course of your career? Anything that when you look back at it, you just can't help but chuckle? Oh, I can think of a few. I think one of my favorite one was um, we were racing uh, those stacker cars. Do you know which one those are? The car on top, the yeah. top of the drives, and then the bottom guy does the gas. I was doing it with uh, one of the guys I raced with, and I was steering. And I screamed the whole way because I honestly thought we were going to tip over. <laughs> I, was, I was terrified. I was terrified. And then so finally we got, <laughs> we got out of the car at the end of the race. And one of the other guys in the other car was like, were you screaming? I was like, no, <laughs> must have been Dave. It wasn't me. <laughs> that was a good one, though. Okay. Any more goals left in your racing career? really i mean if i could get into the pinty series again yeah mm -hmm. maybe if we get ever get a chance and the border opens we go back down i loved racing 
in uh, Vegas. And you did a pretty good job at New Smyrna the last few years. Yeah, that was a, that was a tough, tough track. Like the level of competition is just not something we see up here. So, but you know what? It was fun. It was fun. And the fact that we got to race in February. Well, that was insane. <laughs> Hey, Erica, I've really appreciated it, enjoyed our little conversation and our visit. Before I let you go, and this is a very important question, especially coming from someone that's been born and raised in the United States. Can you explain to me what poutine is? Poutine? Poutine. Can you explain what poutine is? Because I look at it and it just makes me shudder. Oh, it's the best thing in the world. I had some this week, actually, because I had a serious craving. <laughs> I even had it for breakfast. Oh, but my God. Good. I know. Um, fries. You can't go wrong with gravy and cheese curds. And if you ever get the chance to just eat a cheese curd, do it. I think they come from there. They make them in Wisconsin, too. Just cheese curds. They squeak. They're great. Oh, all I gotta say. Okay. <laughs> I- I'll try them. Um <laughs> Not real excited about it, but I have been very excited about visiting with you. Hey, good luck when Canada opens. Let's hope that you get a lot of races and who knows, maybe number 13 is on the horizon for you. Yeah, we'll see.